Hello chess lovers, I have another spectacular game for you. With the white pieces playing William Schulten and his opponent is Lionel Kizeritsky. Kizeritsky is the same chess player against whom Adolf Andersen played his famous immortal game. This game was played in 1844 in Paris. Schulten had white pieces and he started with e4, e5 by Kizeritsky and f4, white goes for king's gambit. He takes f4, king's gambit accepted, bishop c4, white is choosing bishop's gambit, not playing knight f3 and allowing queen h4 check and black instantly uses his chance and plays queen h4 giving a check, king f1, now comes b5, luring away the bishop from this diagonal, bishop takes b5, knight f6, knight c3, knight g4, already there is a simple mating thread, we see knight h3 covering the f2 square, now comes the second knight, knight c6, knight d5, white is threatening, knight takes c7 check, forking the king and the rook, but Kizeritsky didn't even pay attention to this threat, he played knight d4 allowing knight takes c7 check, king d8, knight takes a8, now comes f3, this queen supported by two knights and a pawn are starting a dangerous attack, d3, of course the pawn on f3 can't be captured because the pawn will no longer protect the knight and black can capture on h3 and then black king can get checkmated, that's why after f3 we see d3, right now white is threatening queen g5 check forking the king and the queen and black plays f6 taking under control the g5 square, bishop c4, as you have noticed the bishop was under attack but it turns out that it was better to play bishop f4 and give up the bishop, if knight takes b5 then queen takes f3, but instead we see bishop c4. On the surface this looks like a normal move, but it turns out that after this move Black is getting a huge advantage. Now comes d5, this time sacrificing the d pawn in order to open up the bishop's path, bishop takes d5 and bishop d6. Well a powerful move, but not the strongest continuation, actually capturing on g2 would have been better, if king takes g2 then knight e3 check, sacrificing the knight as well, if bishop takes e3 then bishop h3 check, if king g1 then bishop c5, already there are some very dangerous threats like queen f4, for example now if a move like c3 then black can go for this queen sacrifice, of course the queen can't be captured because of this knight f3 checkmate or even knight e2 is also mating or if a move like queen e1 just knight e2 check followed by bishop takes e3 check and then again white king is getting checkmated, but after bishop takes d5 we see bishop d6 queen e1, after which white is losing on the spot, well queen d2 could have prolonged the game, the idea is that if f takes g2 then queen takes g2, but William Schulten overlooked Kizeritsky's brilliant combination and after bishop d6 he played queen e1, f takes g2 check, king takes g2 and now you can pause the video and try to find Kizeritsky's next moves. Ready? In this position, Lionel Kizeritsky first captured on h3, sacrificed his queen, and after king takes h3, he played knight e3, discovered check, king h4, knight f3 check, king h5, and believe it or not, but after bishop g4, this is a checkmate. Look at this. This is truly the finest combination Lionel Kizeritsky had ever unleashed. Look at this. Thanks for watching and if you have any questions don't hesitate to leave your comments. Good luck.